Hey guys, a Muslim apologist who goes by the name of Mohammed Hijab has published a video with the title Neil deGrasse Tyson embarrasses himself again. Okay, I know it's petty, but that the spelling of the title was not even checked is symptomatic for this person, indicative of how sloppy the level of his research is as well as his line of reasoning. Okay, what is not so petty, and that's precisely why I will do this, is to check whether we can trust what hijab says and claims, or whether we need to check and double check everything he says and claims, or tells us he is quoting. I will not go into why a nobody and nincompoop should have a say when addressing a president, chairman, director and established scientist like Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've shown that he, Dr. Tyson that is, can be wrong, but then I used facts and I used constructive criticism. And not what this hijab guy is doing, just slinging mud, throwing a temper tantrum and addressing a strawman. I have critiqued and rebutted hijabs, well, all this, these claims that he makes in various videos, several times already. I've demonstrated that he is dishonest and I totally deconstructed his favorite hobby, the contingency argument. But here it's just a matter of looking at facts, checking his claims and trying to ascertain whether what he claims can be compared to reality or requires verification every time. Now claims he makes without supplying a source, I might add. And he says, for example, well, if God is all if God is all powerful, yes, and all good, the fact that evil exists means that if he's all powerful and he's allowing evil to exist, that that is a contradiction in, uh, to his omnipotence or his all power. But if he is all powerful and he allows it to exist, this contradicts his goodness or the fact that he's all good. So in this video, our little hijab here starts off by butchering the Epicurus demonstration of logical thinking. If you compare what hijab says with what Epicurus said, you will notice, no doubt, a certain difference in, should I say, intellectual capability. What I personally find strange is that just taking these two attributes mentioned by Epicurus and assigned to this particular God immediately renders it impossible because they are mutually exclusive, a logical contradiction. Now, the response by hijab to add more attributes to counter this is actually intellectual suicide since it adds more contradictions and makes the existence even more impossible, if that were possible. This is really strange. He now goes on to provide a soundbite, saying that someone called J.K. Mackey, um, we can conceive that the problem of evil does not show that the central doctrines allows for evil and a God to coexist without logical inconsistency. Well, I am unable to find anyone called J.K. Mackey, who is a philosopher. Philosophers of atheistic philosophers like J.K. Mackey and others have, have said this is this problem of evil inquiry or postulation or argument is in fact, let me read exactly what we can concede, he says, that the problem of evil does not show that the central doctrines of theism are inconsistent. The reason why he says that is because it's very clear to conceive of a God who is all powerful, but which who allows or which allows a, a kind of evil to exist. There's no logical inconsistency in conceiving of a world where both God exists and suffering exists. And hijab does not provide any sources. So what I found is a philosopher called J.L. Mackey, as in John Leslie Mackey, who talks about the problem of evil, something that hijab seems to have misunderstood, since when you check, Mackey actually says the opposite. Now, Mackey clearly states that the problem of evil brings out the irrational nature of the God belief and represents a contradiction. Mackey states that on the problem of evil, it can be shown, not that religious beliefs lack rational support, but that they are positively irrational, that the several parts of the essential theological doctrine are inconsistent with one another going on further to cement this by writing that, you know, God is omnipotent, God is holy good, and yet evil exists. There seems to be some contradiction between these three propositions, so that if any two of them were true, the third would be false. 
conceive of a god who is all powerful, but which who allows or which allows a, a kind of evil to exist. There is no logical inconsistency in conceiving of a world where both God exists and suffering exists. So, this is so clear that I don't quite understand how anyone can misunderstand this. Once again, as soon as you fact check these Dawa guys, they fail miserably. So next, Hijab goes into some mental masturbation and climaxes with a question he poses to an astrophysicist. Let me ask you a question. As an astrophysicist, as a scientist, how can you even prove that evil exists in the first place? Now, I fail to see the significance here. You might as well ask a, I don't know, a bus driver, a branch manager or a goalie to explain the concept of evil, as they will all have an idea and it will differ from the one the others have. The problem is, hijab fails to define what he calls evil. Is someone who commits a crime once in their life, are they evil? What about someone who inflicts physical or emotional pain all their lives? Is that an evil person? Is a person evil who applies physical pain to extract the location of hostages or a bomb from a criminal? So I think it's obvious that this requires a robust definition or the flexibility to allow for several. Whereas most atheists come to the conclusion, including your friend Sam Harris, and uh, maybe he's your friend, Richard Dawkins, that actually evil doesn't exist. There is no good, there is no evil, he says. Is this true? Is this correct? No, don't, oh, be don't be silly. What Professor Dawkins does is show that we can have, and this is what he says, happy and meaningful lives without worshipping a deity, and that religion, far from being a necessary prop for morality, actually produces more evil than good. This is another prime example where Hijab has no clue what is being said and manages to misunderstand once again, what is being said? And he manages to misrepresent it. Richard Dawkins, that actually evil doesn't exist. That is all pitless indifference, in the words of Richard Dawkins. It's all pitless indifference. There is no good, there is no evil, he says. Now, Richard Dawkins says the war between good and evil is really just the war between two evils. Is this a person who does not think evil exists? Come on, really? What was he job thinking? Oh, and really, the, the, the part hijab did not grasp is where Professor Dawkins says the universe that we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. Is this saying there is no evil? No, he talks about the universe, an unconscious, unthinking, mechanical universe without a god without a benevolent God, where a benevolent God would not allow this. And this is why he writes the total, and I'm quoting, the total amount of suffering per year in the natural world is beyond all decent contemplation. During the minute that it takes me to compose this sentence, thousands of animals are being eaten alive. Many others are running for their lives, whimpering with fear. Others are slowly being devoured from within by rasping parasites. Thousands of all kinds are dying of starvation, thirst and disease. End quote. That is why it follows that if there were a god or goddess who designed this, they would be a pernicious and cruel one, evil. How on earth can he, the hijab claim, that the same goes for Dr. Sam Harris? A moral realist. Whereas most atheists come to the conclusion, including your friend Sam Harris, and uh, maybe he's your friend, Richard Dawkins, that actually evil doesn't exist. How can he say that he believes there is no evil when he actually demonstrates how it can be established scientifically? This is beyond me. This is outright silly. Now, on page 48 of his book, The Moral Landscape, he writes, a moral realist would like to say we are witnessing more than a mere difference of opinion. So we're all in the presence of a moral error. It seems to me that we can reasonably be confident that it's bad, it is bad for parents to sell their sons into the service of a government that intends to cut off their genitalia using only hot chili sauce as local anesthetic. Now, quite clearly, it, is, it says here that it is bad for parents to sell their sons. And on page 8, he even writes the questions about values, about meaning, morality and life's larger purpose are really questions about the well-being of conscious creatures. 
and then says this can't be scientifically understood. So how can hijab even dream of claiming Dr. Harris says evil does not exist? Does it get worse? Oh, yes. Because what is outright embarrassing is that a really well-known book of his has a chapter titled Good and Evil. And he, he explains it. I believe that we will increasingly understand good and evil, right and wrong, in scientific terms, because moral concerns translate into facts about how our thoughts and behaviors affect the well-being of conscious creatures like ourselves. End quote. So I think this demonstrates the level of ignorance of hijab. He has never really read any of the things he says he quotes or takes knowledge from. It's only fabrication and wishful thinking, combined with an immoral and corrupt mind only out to protect his precious yet oh-so-weak God and his silly book, by doing the only thing he can do, and that is put on a clown show. But everything falls apart once it is checked or anyone attempts to verify any claim he makes. Now, let's do the same for a claim he made just a few minutes later, again, not providing a source for his claim. Does Bertrand Russell say there is no evil? The same thing. Bertrand Russell said the same thing. Well, see for yourself. This is what he says, and I quote, No one can believe in a good God if they've sat at the bedside of a dying child. End quote. Does this mean that judgments about good and evil are all false? Not necessarily. I mean, Russell did subscribe to that view for a brief period during 922. 1922, that is. An alternative theory is that moral judgments are neither true nor false since their role is not to state facts or to describe the world is, but to express emotions, desires or even commands. End quote. So hijab once again does not understand what a philosopher was actually saying. Only jumping at words and isolating them, not in a position to mentally process the intent. Or what you might have read, like in this small, like, insignificant book by Graham Oppie, with all due respect, Arguments Against God, about 100 pages. And the only ar positive argument against God that he does provide is this pathetic argument or problem of evil. This is actually the only positive argument that you atheists have. No, this is, oh goodness, this is another example of sloppy and hasty research not getting the message. Now, the book is not called Arguments Against God, but The Best Argument Against God. It is not about the problem of evil at all, but comparing naturalism to theism. Anyway, the remainder of the video is more or less an emotional rant, mixing up natural and methodological naturalism, spouting misrepresentations, false accusations, illogical statements, silly claims, and blatant falsehoods. Our little hijab simply does not comprehend that we non-theists, we, we react, we react to claims. And if, an, if a theist makes a silly or nonsensical or contradictory claim, we point that out. That's how it works. Okay, one last example of how pathetic this is. There's no difference between you and a slab of meat that you see in the butcher shop. All of you are just composed of the same kind of atoms and material. A slab of meat is unable to paint or complain about something. It can't compose a symphony, write poetry, direct a film, or, or research the origin of species. Hijab is so full of hatred towards all that is not Islam and above his very limited intellectual capabilities that he loses the plot and just spews nonsense. He must feel incredibly inferior that he sees a need to boost himself artificially. But, come on, anyone will immediately see through that and will still not take him seriously. Welcome to reality in the real world. Sorry, Mr. Hijab, we don't live in a fairy tale. It is so pathetic that it is actually not funny anymore. But to answer the question I asked in the beginning, no, we cannot trust Hijab. Whatever he says is rarely a fact. We should not trust anything he says, and A, demand he provides a source for his claims, and B, then fact check them. And we need to do this ourselves to make sure that they are genuine and not the product of a dishonest and uneducated wannabe.
And that's all for me for today. See you in the next video.